You're listening to the MLS Fantasy Insider, bringing you weekly tips, tricks, and advice for the official MLS Fantasy game. Actually, I got excited. Last time I was on the podcast, you weren't there. So I was like, man, it's just me and Reed. No, not today. It's a bummer. Uh, well, tonight it is all three of us. So hello, ho, welcome everyone to the MLS Fancy Insider. Uh, we have just gotten started. So ooh, actually, I need to update the social real quick. I almost sent that out with the wrong, the wrong people listed as the guests. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> yep, yep. Nope, nope. I don't know how much you use your your Twitter there, Matt, but. We'll, uh, all the time. There, there we go. All the time. There we go. Yep. Then get it right, Reed. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm making it work. I'm making it work. Just kidding. Delete. All right, here we go. Now we'll make that. Now we'll make that correct for the post. Here, gotta get the spacing to look good. Yeah, there we go. We'll save that. All right, so social media one is out. Social media two is out there on Twitter. Let me head over to unpin from profile. Head over to Reddit. Reddit, geez, I do that all the time now. Let me head over to Discord. <clears throat> Send out this little social reminder there. Well, fine. This is what you came for, everyone see everything how happening that's right kind of good. <laughs> to see how the podcast is made this is how the pseudo semi not really professionals do it mm -hmm. right there but that does go there and now i'll ping everyone in the general chat and i'll get some frog emojis sent back at me and everyone send now I mean, I'm assuming that you're coming to this Discord. That's what the kind of stuff you're expecting to get when you get a ping like that. That's just what people do. It's what people do. Right. It's all good. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast for tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us. People starting to come in here. I got the recording, Gene. Don't worry. I started it uh, before I started, uh, went live with the episode. So we are all good um, with, with the recording. Thank you, though, for the reminder. And I have... If you, uh, if you have noticed, I see that while you were quick to be like, hey, Reed, make sure you're recording. No one was like, hey, Reed, make sure that the, the little graphic indicators of what segment you're on are correct. Because they are. I updated those as well. Uh, but thank you very much, everyone, to, for joining us tonight. Weird round that we just got finished with. So oh. uh, we're looking forward to talking about it, sharing in, in successes and anguishes. Got to get my yep. logo flipped back around here. Ah, well, it's super boring. People know what it is. Uh, and also some information that will cover at the beginning of the show as well. So social is out. Please be so kind and share that. If it's the first time that you are joining us for the MLS Fantasy Insider stream, welcome. And please do like and subscribe. Hit the bell notification. It helps us so much with uh, trying to stay in touch with the niche community that we have here. Uh, still get new people joining all the time for the channel. So very fun to, to have new people participating in our fun little hobby right here. Uh, we will get started right now and get everything going for this week's episode. Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the MLS Fantasy Insider, our preview of round 5 of the 2024 MLS Fantasy season. This episode is brought to you by Yellow Cards, because if you didn't get one in round 4, were you really there? Uh, but no, 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 sorry, sorry. Actually brought to you by the amazing MLS Fantasy Insider Patreon community. It's for you, because of you, that we are able to continue to do this podcast. And I thank you so, so much for your participation in this project. If you want to learn more about our Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash MLSFI and find out how you can help support this project right here. I'm your host, Reed Connolly from MLSFantasyBoss.com, and tonight I'm joined by my partner in fantasy, Ashley Savage. I'd also like to welcome our special guest and a familiar voice, Matt Wojo Wotesco from uh, the MLS Fantasy Boss Discord, one of our top players right there. How are you all doing tonight? I'm great. Happy to be back. Missed last week. 
Yeah, I'm doing excellent. Thank you for having me. On a scale of one to ten, Matt, how much did I butcher your name? No, that was that was perfect. Yes. Oh, look at you. So so yeah. rarely get feedback like that on this podcast. Good job, it's, Reed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know for a lot of people, it it must annoy you that that names are not butchered correctly, and I know that I, I get that. I totally understand that. But it's just like tradition at this point that. Yeah. We're, we're not going to look it up. We're just going to kind of stumble through it and figure it out as we go along. It's it's just kind of part of the general charm. I guess. When Reed I, says it correctly, I think a lot of us find that unsettling. <laughs> I know some things here and yeah. there, and I listen to the games. I mean, it is what it is, but it is. It's kind of a running joke at this point. So if, if that kind of thing bothers you, I'm sorry, but it is just nah. kind, kind of part of the, nah. part of the show it's right all, now. It's all good. <laughs> So this yeah. is your second time with us, Matt. Is that right? It is, yeah. That's right. That's right. So you're able to to join in our 10th year celebration as a returning guest here. I know uh, when um, when Christian mentioned that you want to be back on, I was like, heck yeah. Uh, Matt's done very well in, uh, in the experts. You're in the experts league again this year, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. You're back yeah. in yep. with us. Uh, done very well there. One of the top scoring players that we have. So excited to have you here tonight to share your advice, especially after a really – difficult and and confusing round so these things do happen we'll definitely get to this if you're in chat go ahead and share uh how you did but i want to start the top of the show with a discussion topic with a disclaimer or whatever you might want to call this um ashley matt feel free to add anything on at the end here but this is going to be a quick pause for Reed to just i don't know it's not really a rant it's just to to recap some previous information that was very hot topic it's a mini rant. I do want to I want to adjust your preface. It's a mini rant. However, it seems to be an FAQ and I think, you know, we definitely touched on this uh I think round in our round 2 preview. Yep. But I think it's worth the mini rant. So yeah. go for it. So so we're going to talk about the change to clean sheet scoring. Um and that's not just like how many points you're getting. I mean getting credit for a clean sheet. So the change to how a player it earns credit for a clean sheet or earns a clean sheet in general. Um, as we first mentioned, as Ashley reminded, in round two, the round two episode, players no longer keep their clean sheet bonus points if they leave the game before a goal is conceded by their team. So in, in MLS of antiquity, we have called this the Madronda because that was one of the first instances where it happened many years ago. Uh, in current time, the player who started all of their kerfuffle this week was Alex Roldan, who left yeah. the game for Seattle while they had not conceded. And then in the 87th <clears throat> minute, 87th, 88th minute, conceded off of the free kick. And Alex Roldan lost his clean sheet bonus points. And that sent everyone on Twitter into a flutter. Because in the past, that had not been how it worked. He would have kept his points since the goal had been conceded previously. Uh, And so I interacted with some people online as to why this happened. We mentioned this before, and so I thought it would be a good idea to just mention it again now that it's much more uh, clear in our minds that that this is what happened. So uh, I, I don't know the exact reason for the change. Let me just be straight up about this. I am not involved in the scoring. I am not involved in the changes, as as good friend Ryan of the show so very nicely pointed out on Twitter. However, we do have connections that have helped us get some information, uh, though at this point it's all public knowledge because it's all, it's all out there. And so we've been able to just piece together what I think makes sense happened from that. So, so what do we know and what's led to the educated guess? One, in 2023, MLS changed its stat provider. And that's what we were able to confirm through the people that we know who work at MLS, that yes, this stat provider is providing stats for the fantasy game. So that's all that we, I don't know if that's even how public that is. It's not secret, but yes, this is the company that is now providing stats for the MLS game. And it's Sport Mm -hmm. Tech Solutions. It's not, it's all over the web back at the time. So Sport Tech Solutions in 2023 started providing stats for MLS. Previously, it had been Opta. We all know, we all know Opta. Sport Tech Solutions is not a new company. It's the same stat provider used by the Bundesliga and the Bundesliga Fantasy Game and, and several others, I'm sure, out there. But that's all that's important for this conversation. So 
Uh, previously, I had been able to go online, and we have in the past, to figure out some of how these scoring, scoring definitions work. And we could find the definition that Opta has for an event. Now, when I looked for sport tech solutions, I've not found where they publicly publish what their definitions are for their events. If someone does, I would love to see it. But they don't publish that. However, when you look into the FAQ of the Bundesliga Fantasy game, they do have a definition in their game for what a clean sheet is and how it's defined. And it's defined like this. A clean sheet point, clean sheet points will only be awarded to a player if the following two conditions are met. One, their team concede, doesn't concede a goal in the entire match. Their team doesn't concede a goal in their entire match. And two, the player plays more than 61 minutes in the match, which that's similar for us. And, I, and while this is not a public definition for sport tech, I, I think this has to be it. Because if you look at the Opta definition, it says a player or team who does not concede a goal for the full match. And with this Opta definition, it definitely gives you the ability to see, yeah, that could be a player or a team. And so if a player comes out, I can see how that definition allows that player to keep the clean sheet because it's a player or a team who they, and they don't concede. But with what I believe to be the Sport Tech Solutions definition, where the first condition is their team doesn't concede. It takes the individual player out of it completely and makes it much more of a team condition. Um, so MLS Fantasy is provided by a third-party provider. It's not run by the company. And we do know that that provider gets stats from MLS. It even says so in the terms and conditions that stats come from MLS and they're not liable for any kind of difference there. That's the final authority is the stats they get from MLS. Um, and so with the way the mapping works that we've discussed previously with some other stats that are no longer in the game, clean sheets is likely a one-to-one -one mapping that was happening. This is the new clean sheet data. It spits out the clean sheet data to the fantasy game. And it's just that overall, a general system-driven function that nobody necessarily thought to take a look at changed where the, what the definition is. So clean sheets are still being spit to the stat server. The fantasy game is still pulling a clean sheet stat. It's just the company who keeps the clean sheet stat is no longer defining it the same way that Opta did. So um, it, I would imagine this was an unintended and an unknown, unrealized change going into this season. Um, could it have been intentional? Maybe. I, I don't know. I would have thought if it was intentional, we might have actually gotten some, some update about this. I think it was unintended. Uh, would we have liked to have seen a better definition of what this was absolutely i mean something like what's in the bundesliga game i think would have been fantastic had it been in our rule set or our information set there but that's what makes me think that it it just wasn't realized that that sort of trickle down impact was going to come to the fantasy game so uh, at the end of the day this is how the game is working clean sheets aren't being carried over by players who subbed out and that's why so many of us are focused on clean sheet hunting with low cost defenders from teams we think have a good shot because it's it's very different. We'll get into some of that. I know I have a comment about that uh, coming up, but that's just the early FAQ answer that I wanted to, to put out there about what we know about this. And again, we brought it to you in round two. We're bringing it to you again. Happy to cover it again, but this information is out there. We are not trying to hide it. And if you know people who are confused, please direct them to this podcast or just direct them to our community. Uh, Matt, Ashley, anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, I just want to, like you said, we obviously have nothing to do with it, but to a certain extent, I don't want anyone to also, like, at Skylar. Um, you know, the rule has changed. It would be impossible to correct for this season. We've oftentimes seen Fantasy MLS change something back the next season. So um, once we get more information mm -hmm. about it, it's not that it will uh, stay like that forever, but I think it, we need to get used to it. Um, it's it's something that, that you shouldn't be getting mad about at this point, I think. Um, but, you know, it, I, for me, it sucks. I'm, I'm pretty pissed about it, but I accepted it week one, if that, if that makes sense. Um, because I think there's something fun about that, right? Like, it's kind of like, 
you know, getting a scratch ticket and then just winning another scratch ticket. Like, it's just, it, there's something rewarding to know that your guy got a clean sheet when no, everybody else didn't. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm i bummed about it, but I think we just kind of got to get over it at, <laughs> at this point. I, I think it's a, a just a quick word, um, um, like a minimal change. I don't think it's a, a major change. It is from the standpoint that we're used to it, but from if you're looking at the rules of scoring and things like that, I mean, Skyler was one of the ones that told me, he was like, it, it, if they're not getting a clean sheet, if their team's not getting a clean sheet, then they don't even need to get a clean sheet. So that was kind of some of, some of the, the rationale behind it. And I, and I do get that. We're used to it. But, I mean, I'm not super surprised that it wasn't really clarified because a lot of the stuff, I mean, we, we, could, we could go round and round about, again, about a lot of the stuff that wasn't clarified earlier um, or before the season. But, I mean, honestly, it is what it is. And the rules, the rules, and like, like you said, Ashley, it's not changing. So yep. let's just let's just move on, y'all, and, uh, and let's, let's, let's play. Move yeah. on and play. Yep. That's right. I'll I'll yeah. mourn the Madronda, but I'll also celebrate the loss of second assist. So we all yeah, have our preferences. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Mourn the Madronda. It is what it is. Uh, so I hope everyone understands a little bit better with that. And again, happy to answer any questions that people have on Twitter or Interact. But please do remember, yes, like all of us, we have some friends who can help us get some information that we're very thankful to have as friends of the show. But we are not part of MLS. We are not affiliated with MLS. We don't make these decisions. From t Occasionally, we have been consulted to, to kind of help vet some player um, decisions for what, what their positions are, uh, but not in the past couple of seasons. I mean, it's just, it's just a community thing here. So we are not involved in official rulings or changes to this game. So... So don't add us if, if, you, if you think we can change it, but we are happy to join you in your sorrow or your ranting with that. But sure. just, just like, we, we, it's not us. It's not us. All right, quick FAQ aside. Go ahead. Let's, uh, let's jump into our recap of round four, uh, starting with you, Wojo. All righty. Um, I ended up with a 73, which um, from what I can tell is probably a pretty average score. Um, Total values up to 116 and some change. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't been like trying to build um, my budget. I, I just I don't tend to play that way. I do use it as like a um, like a tiebreaker on players and things like that. I will keep, keep that in consideration as to you know what type of players I choose um, and may likely go for those that are going going to get a rise. But I haven't been super focused on it. Um, Overall, um, sitting at 55, um, my goal is to get into the, the Champions League first time. So just sitting right outside that, um, I'm kind of feeling okay about where I am. A um, little behind last year, but I think I peaked a little too early last year, Reed. And so I'm um, trying to, to play a little steadier. Um, and, you know, if we can hit that Champions League this first go-around qualification, I'll be, I'll be happy. I like um, that. I like that using as a tiebreaker. Yeah approach yeah i like that a lot um so some some of the players that impressed um i know ashley you had a couple of these so i'm not going to go through all of them but uh man um i i caught a couple of the games on sunday i caught the the new england game and the atlanta game um and man yakumakis that guy he wants the golden boot sure. he he wants it bad and he looks like he's he's fiery which is good and bad, obviously, um, for, for obvious reasons. But I mean, he is—he's a—he's a goal scorer, and he's going to be near the top um, throughout this, especially if he can keep getting service. Um, so he was one of the first ones that really stood out. Um, man, the, the the Galaxy attack—it is. Um, I mean, I know people say that you know having the LA teams good are good for the league, and I don't necessarily disagree with that. I think. Um, Man, the Galaxy have been pretty bad for the past few years, um, pretty rough. And so it's it's actually really fun to see the the Puj, um, Cancel, um, <laughs> the Jovalich. Yeah. Um, and and their, I mean, the speed, the passing, 
um, and they're just scoring for fun. And so I'd love to see them keep that up. Um, it's, it's again, it's nice having another team that you can pull from for, especially for fantasy purposes. Um, well, I mean, Luis Suarez still still kicking it at 37. I mean, he didn't he didn't look like he was moving real great, but obviously it doesn't take much for him to you know put a couple of goals in. And uh, and I want to shout out to Campana as well. Yeah. Um, I had some I had a feeling about him um, because I, I I knew he was going to be starting, and obviously didn't go with it, but <laughs> should have should have. Um, I, you know, I don't love, I think they were, were they away? I think they were away. Um, I don't usually choose away strikers. So, um, but I mean, props to Miami minus Messi. They still, they still did it and um, looked great doing it um, from what I can tell. Um, also want to give some, some quick props to um, Minnesota and Montreal who are, uh, I mean, Minnesota just got their coach this week, right? Um, <laughs> actually, full time got him in, and um, no, no Reynoso had some injury, like tons of just injury problems. And so, I mean, props to them for sitting in first right now. And then Montreal, who everybody thought was going to be a doormat, um, have really just shown some, shown us who they are. And so, I, I got to give them some props on that. Um, some quick thoughts um, that I had. Uh, should Lucho be in your team every week? I mean, he is perfect for this new scoring system. It is, yes, exactly. It is he is tailor made for the scoring system, and the the number of key passes that he gets, and the fact that he shoots so much, it's just like I I I don't know that I will be without him very often. Um, is it time to say that Columbus's def- defense is legit again? Um, Obviously, I think they've had three straight clean sheets. Um, I don't know if it's the structure that they have going on or some new personnel in the defense there, um, but Nancy's doing a great job. Um, we knew they had the great attack, but, you know, is their defense legit again? And so I'm excited to see what that looks like. Um, should we be shifting our thinking back to captaining forward, right? Um, it was. It's always been about, you know, Let's, you captain midfielders, they're more consistent. The bonus points, now that the bonus points have changed, we're starting to see some of it. It may be time to start shifting our thinking back to, you know, are these forwards more viable as a captain option? Because, I mean, if you captain Yakumaki, you know, last week, you were, you know, you were sitting pretty. And so um, that, that was one, actually one thing that came up in Discord um, towards the end of the evening last night was um, – do you know is it time to start shifting our thinking from solely midfield 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 where they have more consistent players are these forwards going to are there some of these forwards going to start being more consistent players and and be a part of that and i think that's kind of cool because it gives a it gives it a different vibe and it gives it a um, a different strategy um and then the last thing i just want to encourage anybody who got frustrated this week with the midfield (laughs) everybody did everybody did so trust your process a lot of those guys, Heal, Fors- well, I don't know if Forsberg was away, but Heal, Pooj, um, Almada, those were solid process plays. And so just stick with those plays and, uh, and, and keep picking them. Yeah, fun fact, uh, through the first four rounds, the best captain has always been a forward so far. If you look really? At the, at the Dream Team, yeah, a forward has been yep. the best caption option that you could have had. Yeah. Ashley? Um. Yeah, I got a 73 as well. We, we tied, even though we didn't play each other. Um, <laughs> uh, my total value is 118.9. And I, I want to preface it because I know, if yet, yet again, I'm money bagging thing, but I am also not go lean for price rise. I do kind of the opposite of, of what you said, which is when I'm picking my team, if I pick a player that's on a down, I don't pick them. Like, I have not picked... I can't think of a player yet um, unless it's like, you know, a a must own, but I still, I'd have to go back and look, but I will not pick up someone that's on a weekly down, even if I love the matchup. And so that's been like a tiebreaker for me on the other end. And I, I kind of think that that's 
why I'm where I am, if that makes sense. Like, I'm always factoring in, and I got lucky. Like, there were a couple weeks where I only used a keeper scrub, or I only used, um, like, one defender scrub, if that makes sense. And so I, I did go hard the first two, maybe three rounds to play cheaper players, like, on my bench, um, but with the intention of still getting points, right? And so I'm, I'm happy with, with my total value at the moment. Um, I think I've just kind of figured out a lock to this system, if that makes sense. I'm sure next year I'll tank, but like, I don't know. This went, Reed made fun of me last year because he was like, oh, well, I'm going for price build, but every week I, I, I wasn't, and it would still grow pretty well. So I still think if you've gone up $3 million a week, that that's definitely good, like more than good. Um, so... Yeah, I'm a, we're still not at the point, though, with how expensive midfielders and strikers started. Like, I'm still tinkering for price. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm definitely not a past that point at, by any means. Um, I just moved out of the Champions League. I just moved out to 51. Um, I think you're I'm, right in front of me, aren't you? I, yeah, I'm, the, I'm kind of the opposite <laughs> of what you were explaining, where I never start hot. I start terrible. And I build and build, and I get into Champions League in the third round or the fourth round. Every time we've had it, that's the only time I've ever gotten in. Um, I don't do well keeping pace. I do well catching up. So this is a weird place for me to be in. I still lost half my head-to-heads this week. I lost my uh, MLS host invitational first place. I gave it over to you. That's fine. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hold, yeah, I'll keep it warm for you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Generally, just uh, like a lot of people will say, just kind of a shit week. Um, midfielders, especially, I I totally agree with what you were talking about. Where, um, it was we've always come to rely on them, and yeah, we'll you know he'll will pop a you know a, a bad round with a three or something every so often, right? Um, but to have everyone basically that were chalk picks for midfield not do well. I don't remember the last time I've seen that. I'm sure someone way more data driven than me can tell me. Um, but I can't remember the last time I had heel Puj, um, Almada, you know, all, I didn't pick up Lucho cause he wasn't starting, but like all of these midfielders just do nothing. Um, and so that was really frustrating for me. So, you know, I'm I'm done with it at this point. But generally, I think everyone did not do great, if that makes sense. Like, obviously, someone did. Um, but generally, like you said, 73, I feel okay. I'm just frustrated with how some stuff worked out. Uh, some players who impressed me, I, I'm just going to echo the GG. Uh, last year, he was kind of like hit or miss for me. Uh, I would try to get on when I thought he would hit, but there were so many games where he would miss, and he almost did. I literally <laughs> were, had the game on and were leaving in the second half, and I said to my husband, Gigi's about to do the thing I always said never happens, which is you don't follow up a hat trick with a hat trick. Like, if I had a tagline under my face for this show, I kind of think, Reed, would you not say, I think that that would be it. You never follow up a hat trick with a hat trick. But that man got a brace after a hat trick. And so I think that, you know, he was this close to being the exception. Um, but, yeah, he's just looking great. But I also wanted to re-bring up, if you will, Cucho. Cucho's <laughs> also still hitting. He had a goal and assist this week. He's producing. Um, and so, you know, I think that that is definitely important to follow. I know he's on the road again this week. Uh, and there's a little bit, a little bit... Sorry, Tyler, always correcting me. He, Yakimakis did not have two goals. He had a goal and an assist. The point production is still there, is my point. Um, but Cucho is definitely someone I think should be on your team most weeks. I don't know. I'm pretty there to say every week. He's definitely in my team again this week, but he is just really benefiting from these point productions and he is contributing very well. Um, uh, another close personal friend of the show via me, Brooks Lennon, uh, coming, <laughs> coming in well this week. Obviously, the shutout helped, but Brooks is a is a guy. Do you know this story, Matt? No, no, no. I can I do a mini tangent read? Sure, sure. Like you're my yeah. dad. I have to ask permission. Um, <laughs> he was 
as for some reason at the end of the a Sounders game last year in the stands talking to someone as we were walking out and I recognized him immediately and asked apologized for interrupting and asked if he would take a picture for me because I host an MLS fantasy podcast and he whether he knew it or not is an exceptionally talented MLS fantasy player <laughs> and, he, and the guy laughed and I took a picture with him and then immediately sent it to Reed and Lane and talked yeah, about it for uh, however long it's been since now he was lovely amazing. Um, yeah. it was nice to see him getting on the assist that as we get into this new era of defenders not like the Madronda was ever really what any of us were picking defenders up for it's nice to know that some of these defenders are staying consistent with assists, bonus points, those things as we continue to just try to clean sheet hunt. So it was nice that Atlanta did get the clean sheet, um, but Brooks impressed me with the 12 this week for sure. Um, and then I agree. I think that Lucho should be in your team every week. If at the very least on the bench with hopefully an option to tinker too, if he's not starting, but after this week, if he's not starting, do you still bench him? <laughs> because I, I think I think there's some time to see there. But um, and lastly, for for me, uh, Santi Rodriguez for NYCFC is someone that I've I have personally been kind of on the fence about. His name's come up on the podcast this season for sure, but he seems to be gaining some consistency. I don't know about NYCFC still. They're still a team that I can't quite get a good read on. And they've definitely had some good fantasy moments, and they've definitely had some average fantasy moments for this year so far. But he is someone that I'm starting to pay attention to matchup dependency. So he stood out for me this week as well. Um, my only thoughts for this this week are there are a lot of big names out, and there are some teams with a lot of people out, and some teams with no one out. And I think that looking through this reference, as Reed will get into later in the show, is really important when you're considering who to pick up this week because of the international call-ups. Yeah, thanks for that shout-out. A couple of uh, definitely good reminders right there. Uh, for myself, I scored 66 points, uh, team value 116.3 now, so I think I went up um, like maybe almost four four or five more. I can't, I can't remember exactly where I was. Might, might have been five, five million more this, this round. Um, this was the round where I stopped really kind of paying attention about price rises for the first three i guess the first round i just went in with it and the rounds two and three i were tr i was trying to ride players who looked like they had price rises um maybe to a slight detriment to my overall rankings with that but i was trying to build some of that budget and so i think if you're in this one teens area uh i had a couple of situations with some drafts where i was like 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 off from getting someone but i think you're in this like 115 area by this point of the season you're definitely doing very well with your with your value gain so i feel pretty happy here and i think uh Wojo said something very nice at the beginning of the show that that uh, he thought my score was fine but i came into this thinking that depending on where you were in the rankings you likely needed to score higher than the 60s had needed to score probably at least in the 70s to see to stay even or make some small gains um i think i i had a mixed bag with my head to heads with a 66 uh, again lost one of them by one point which is which is always always tough um, but i think if you score maybe the higher 60s is okay but uh, i think it was really the 70s is where you were kind of shooting for with this kind of mixed bag round to to maybe not be disappointed in where you were i fell some in the overall rankings but again depends on where you were in the rankings to begin with for how much impact this is going to have so if you got 60s and got green arrows congrats happy for you very very happy for you um minimal takeaways for me especially since i had that big faq at the beginning but yeah echo the santi rodriguez comment uh excellent stats for this past round and some previous rounds uh, as onset play so that's good had several dangerous chances at home there at new york city and shout out to eli who mentioned him during the show last week as well so i didn't have him uh he had 2.0 ownership so if you did get him last week congrats that was a great differential but i agree with ashley that coming up at Cincinnati, at Miami, not sure about those matchups. Go home after that to, I believe, Sporting Kansas City. Maybe that's a bit more of a tempting one uh, to look back at, at New York City. Whenever they're at home, always tempting for New York City. Uh, the last player I'm going to mention is Evander. Came back, second game playing, some massive bonus points up against Houston. And it really has me scratching my head uh, about what I think about him because that's we don't have a lot of games to to compare that to but again those bonus points really 
really appealing, and it, it may be that I'm keying in on who might be my Barrios going forward. So at least for this year, so we'll, we'll find out. A um, couple of thoughts that I did want to share as well, uh, echoing what, what Wojo had said about LA Galaxy. Nice to see them scoring, but we're getting into some of that situation now of who do I go with? Am I going with one of the midfielders? Am I going with the forward? Am I going to go with all three? So um, that's just one thought as we see those players that traditionally what we've called kind of that Houston effect of like multiple players can score. Who am I going to go with? Uh, it's, it's going to be part of that decision-making process each week. And then finally, wrapping up my thoughts with the defenders, only four clean sheets in round four. And so very tough for clean sheet hunting. I mentioned that all the changes to defender bonus points and defender scoring has made clean sheet hunting pretty much the priority or the, the main focus of how we're, we're picking defenders. Um, if you look through who had the highest scores, it was obviously the players from those clean sheet teams who had the highest points. But there were a few others dusted in there, and those are the ones who got goals um, as well, which is not something... You can predict, but it's the reason why I have gone back to favoring more center backs than I have my wing backs because I'm with the wing backs. I'm hoping for those assists, hoping for some of those attacking points. My center backs become a bit more targets for those set plays with maybe a, an increased chance of getting a goal. So that's that's my personal preference with with center backs right now, but definitely uh, an impact that we're seeing due to the changes in bonus points. All right, thank you guys so much for the recap. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your scores. We're going to get into our abbreviated housekeeping section for round five coming up right after this. Okay, here we go. Thanks, everybody, for letting me know about the levels. Got that taken care of. So turn that on. Switch to the league scores and housekeeping. Go over to that how are you doing chat how's everybody doing okay oh ashley taking care of chat good job good job yeah gene you had 68 and drop from 54 wait from 45 to 2 that's not a drop i have a feeling increase. some numbers are being missed there okay okay 72 there we go i see it down there yeah no no yeah i i fell a, i fell a, a decent bit myself um where i was so it's uh yeah, 60s, 60s, 70s. It was it was rough. It was rough this round. Uh, let's get the social. Ashley, out. did you fall? Yeah. How far? How far did you fall? Not, not much. Less than ten, I think. I think I, I was. I think mine was five. Yeah, I think I was yeah. forty, and fell to fifty-one. Yeah, I went yeah. from fifty to fifty to fifty-five. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for Brooks Lennon. <laughs> He seemed expensive. I almost dropped him. <laughs> okay, so social is out again. Again, please do share if you would be so kind. Always appreciate that as we continue through the podcast. Hello and welcome back to our housekeeping section for round five. Skipping over the leagues again. I know still a lot of people uh, just tied, and so we're going to wait until we get a bit more difference there before starting to, to call out the names again but very competitive very excited to see everyone playing i hope you're enjoying the pro rail league as always so for round five uh, the start time is saturday march 23rd at two o'clock p.m with new england versus chicago and new york red bulls versus miami uh, of course we then have our normal apple tv schedule right there with our Two o'clock games, a bunch of 7.30 games, some 8.30s and some 10.30s. Actually, not a bad round for setting up your ruse. Everyone plays on Saturday, so there's no Sunday games this week, but uh, you'll want to keep track of the lineups. But there are definitely some good targets, I think, that you can have for your auto ruse or your switch ruse, uh, even with this setup because of how all the games line up. Unfortunately, there are no teams in a double game week, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at that. Uh, but we do have three teams on a bye week this round, which is going to make activating those switcheroos very, very easy. So Dallas, Minnesota, and Montreal all have a bye this week, and you will have plenty of 4.0 players to choose from if you need to span, expand your budget right there. Uh, this is a call-up 
round. We will be going over call-ups very soon, courtesy of uh, the Mega Reference and everyone who helps curate that. Um, this is the CONCACAF Nations League going on for us and other leagues going on for others with International Call-Up Week. So on uh, the 21st, March 21st, the United States plays Jamaica and Panama plays Mexico. And then during our game week, uh, on the 23rd, Canada plays Trinidad and Tobago, and then Costa Rica plays Honduras. So those are what's that's what's going on with CONCACAF at that time, with those players gone. Of course, other leagues are also playing. And uh, I'll jump into that right now, talking about our suspensions and injuries. But want to do a quick shout-out, because I know, Ashley, you have some thoughts about this. Uh, part of what we'll talk about are some of the, the discipline report that's going on. There were a crazy amount of cards issued during this round and it just seemed crazy to me maybe this is not quite as far off of the norm but there were 80 some 80 82 ish uh yellow cards issued in this last round five i believe five or six red cards and at least one situation of a yellow to a red from getting two yellows so this was i mean there were almost 90 cards yep. issued during this round and it was bonkers and you had some thoughts ashley as of my my bud Jordan Nakamura sent me this stat as well. As of last week, the referees were averaging <coughs> one VAR per game when the average from last year was one VAR every three games. Excuse me. <clears throat> That's obscene. <laughs> and just to add on to the to the cards. I mean, listen, at this point paying attention to who's on yellow card. I mean, are we are we already at that point? Like, are we at yellow card morning watch yet? Are we, I, I mean, we're going to catch it sooner than we ever have before. I mean, for, for some. Yeah, it's definitely something to pay attention to. Have they gotten one in the previous weeks? As And if they have, then I think you have to expect that this is probably going to continue. So um, there's no indications that MLS is going to pay anytime soon. <laughs> So I think we're here. I really appreciated the chance coming out of uh, Columbus, I saw, and then there was someplace else as well. Um, I mean, I heard a lot of great commentary towards the referee in Seattle, but I won't repeat it here. Um, and I think, you know, you just need to expect a yellow card or two here or there, and I think paying attention to players who've gotten some consistently already is a good indicator for that. Yeah, and there are a lot of players who are out on uh, on call-ups, so I definitely encourage you to head over to the MLS Fantasy Boss Discord channel, go down to the Fantasy Resources, the Fantasy Tools section, and check on the Mega Reference right there because there are a lot of players. We'll mention a few of them tonight, but please do go and check out. So uh, starting with Atlanta, we have six players who are out uh, headlining, Almada, Giacomakis, and, and Wiley. Some are all out this week. Uh Austin has two players out. Cascante, uh, probably the biggest name right there. Chicago has a couple of out. Shakiri, definitely a big miss right there. Cincinnati has Robinson, his one one player out. Chicago has two. Uh, Cincinnati only has one player out, and that is Robinson. Colorado is missing two players, but you're probably not looking at Colorado. Sorry, Matt. Uh, Columbus has five players out there, including um, their starting goalkeeper, and that has been... Uh, something that I was looking at very closely with these call-ups is if the starting goalkeeper was out. While that does give you a good opportunity for uh, a keeper maybe some extra little value gains right there, a risk in my mind for, for losing fantasy points instead of that gain. So uh, I've been very aware of who had a starting keeper out. A couple of players out for Charlotte, not, not super impactful. Uh, four players out for DCU, including Herrera. Uh, two players out for Dallas, Frazier and Norris. Houston is missing uh, two players as well, including Valdez. Uh, nobody out for LA Galaxy, so good there. LAFC is missing two players, uh, Compos, Compos and Ordaz. Uh, Compost, a big one we'll talk about coming up. Uh, Miami is missing four players with Calendar, Gomez, um, Redondo, and Ruiz. Also, of course, dealing with the messy injury right there to keep an eye on. Minnesota is missing uh, five players, uh, Boxel, Laud, Pookie, uh, Rosales, and St. Clair. So another starting keeper right there. 
Uh, Montreal is not playing this round, so they're in Minnesota is also not playing, so not a not a big one to keep up with. But those players are playing international, so keep an eye on them for potential injuries right there. Uh, Montreal, <coughs> uh, Piet, Wadaman, uh, Sirio, Chionaire are all missing right there. Campbell, Nashville, Godoy, and Schaffelberg are both missing, so two players there. Uh, the Revolution missing three players. Um, New York City is missing three players as well. New York Red Bulls missing six players, including Cornell starting goalkeeper, uh, Forsberg and Tolkien. So some key absences right there. Orlando is missing six players as well, including Galese and uh, Maguire. And uh, now Torres has been added. So Tyler updating the mega reference as we go. So seven players out for Orlando, including Torres. Uh, Philadelphia missing eight, seven, eight players, including Blake, uh, starting keeper, Gazdog, Lowe, Martinez, so a lot of absences there. Portland missing three, including uh, Miller and Cropo. Again, another keeper. Uh, RSL missing two players, including Luna. San Jose, Earthquakes missing four players, including Ocha. Um, Seattle, nobody. Good job, Ashley. You made it through there. Sporting Kansas okay. City is missing one. Vargas, St. Louis, nobody. Good job, guys. Uh, Toronto is missing Flores and Vancouver, missing two players, including Picolet. So I know there's a lot just ran through to try to give some of the highlights. Head over to the Mega Reference to check out not just the call-ups by team. You can check out the call-ups by country. You can check out the call-ups by uh, federation. So it's all split right there. Uh, and, of course, we'll wrap up with a quick mention about uh, the injuries and suspensions as we teased a second ago uh, notable returns we have rodriguez for dcu makes a return after a long recovery from an acl uh, derussi and rusnak returned as subs uh, last week for austin and seattle and then reynoso makes his first appearance in that game but again on a bye this week so uh, but good to see him back for that production no one on yellow card suspension yet. No big names on yellow card watch, but we are definitely working towards that number quicker than usual. Uh, we do have some players who are out on red card um, suspensions, though. So um, some of the notable names there, Raheem Edros Edwards. Ah, I got some names mixed up. Raheem Edwards, Pedro Santos. There we go. Got those. Up. Probably the biggest names right there. Um, but we also have Josh Atencio. We have Daniel Edelman, we have Keaton Parks, and we have uh, Martin um, Caceres. So those are the six players who are out because of the crazy number of cards that we got in this last week. Uh, injuries, uh, Vargas is out with a lower leg injury. Uh, Capetti is out with hamstring. Uh, Messi, of course, has his calf injury. Kalmanic is out with a hamstring injury, and JFR has a non-contact injury, whatever that means. Uh, and then... Um, Lowen is out for two weeks as well. So uh, a few a few key names who had injuries, a few key many key names out on call ups this week, and and that is just going to make the hashtag because MLS effect even more so for for this round. So some of these players who were scoring this last round who you've never heard of might be players to look at again who might have opportunities to score because this is this is going to be one of those bananas rounds where you're going to want to uh, definitely buckle up because we're going to be in for a wild ride. Um, Matt, Ashley, anything else you want to add before we move on to our player picks? Just lineups, just lineups, lineups, lineups. Make sure you're paying attention. I think these are one of this is going to be one of those weeks where I think a tinker could be a good thing, if that makes sense. Like if you're still looking to price rise, um, there's going to be players that are playing that will be good bench spots, right? Some 4.0 defenders, some cheaper midfielders if you're trying to save money um, and go a little more expensive or chalkier with your starters. I think that this is a week to look for that. Uh, but I also hesitate to say avoid the, oh, that team's got no one tinker because that all, almost always ends in madness. But um, I think there's some great benefits to be had financially for some of the people that are gone. Uh, but just keeping in mind who is good and still here, if that makes sense. So, very true. All right. Well, thank Matt. you so much. And uh, Matt, anything to add? I was just gonna say, um, yeah, the the opportunity to get some cheaper players and um, to maybe enable 
um, some of the more expensive players if you're still dealing with budget issues or I mean like you said Ashley we're we're not all quite at that point where we can just pick whoever we want and so um, I, I think some of these these uh, bench guys that are getting starts uh, over this weekend will be helpful um, in a lot of circumstances. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing that. And we, of course, will be coming up with who we do think is worth taking a look at for round five right after this. I hesitate to even say this, but do you guys know how cheap uh, Craig Poe's backup is? Who's his backup? Pantamus. Is it Pantamus? Is, is, is he five? Four nine. Four nine. Okay, that's not bad. Crazy cheap. <laughs> uh, I say pecan, Patrick. That's what I say. So, uh, you, I say you guys, pecan. I say pecan. I say picole. So, that's, I said pee it correctly. I mean, can we can we get that one? Yeah. Can we get no? He's just the Columbus keeper. That's how I deal with that one, Tyler. Yeah. Um, that's that's. I'm uh, sorry. I'm getting I'm getting distracted sorry, by. But I'm bed. sorry for using jargon. It just comes out sometimes. I will say JFR is not as, as, as cool as we've had in the past with like J Mart and things like that. Sure. I was like, there's a lot of people that aren't going to know what JFR stands for. Well, feel free to call me out and say it at the beginning of the next segment. <laughs> what if my kids see this? No, I'm just... It's fair. No, it's fair. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm getting distracted. They're not going to watch this. <laughs> Let's see here. Social media. Social media and post, post and post. All right, social media is out for this next segment. Making sure that wasn't my wife texting me. It was not. Don't forget to change the. Whoa, turn that off. Fade in there we go got that okay okay um i like that i like that patrick okay here we go hello and welcome back to our final segment where we're talking about the players who we are targeting going into round five uh, starting out as always with keepers and defenders uh matt who do you like Man, targeting using a lot of doing a lot of heavy lifting in, in these scenarios here, Reed. Um, Ashley, you were touching on. Actually, both of you you were talking about some of the international call ups, and as I was looking through the matchups, I'm like, "Ooh, that'd be a great matchup." Oh no, no, there so and so's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be a great matchup. Oh no, so they're not going to have any of their defense. You know, so it was it was it was quite challenging. Um, uh, because of the new scoring system, I, I've just been going cheap AF man on on keepers, um, trying trying to choose maybe a home keeper with a with a with a decent matchup, um, and then you know since we have um, several cheaper ones this week, um, I, I try to run a, a keeper roo if I can. Um, I was able to um, the last couple of weeks, um, but it's not always possible depending on you know, your budget. And so um, some of the thoughts I had were um, for keeper, um, you know, I, I actually thought about um, the Miami backup keeper, I believe. I mean, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but is that DeSantos? Is he the backup keeper? Or is, um, the, it doesn't matter because he's five and the, and the other guy's four, so that's even better. So <laughs> um, I just think Miami – I think Miami's good, you know. I think they they'll show up. Um, I don't like any of the earlier games for for clean sheets, really. But if you want to run a keeper route um, with the with the current Apple TV schedule, um, you you probably either have to go with with an early game and then like a 7:30 game, um, or you go with a 7:30 game on your bench and then you go with one of the later ones. And I don't love, I honestly don't love the later ones either um, for clean sheets. So um, a couple of the thoughts I had were take like maybe like the Miami keeper and then uh, roll that into um, 
the Toronto keeper, uh, Gavron, um, or uh, somebody like Bush from Columbus. I really do like Columbus's defense, even if it's away. It, it makes me a little nervous um, with them being on the road, but God, they've been so solid. But do they do they do they get a fourth in a row? You know, four four clean sheets in a row is tough. And so, what what are the odds there? And so, um, but he's but he's five, so it's pretty cheap. Um, I don't know how Atlanta's going to score. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan, but without Almada, without Yakumaki, I I just Saba and 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 Silva on the wings are they're solid players, but they're just not the same caliber. Um, I don't know who's going to back them up. They've got Lennon, but he can only do so much from right back. And so, anyway, all that to say, I really, you know, I, I feel I feel solid about Toronto. I think Toronto Atlanta is going to be a tight game anyway. Um, I think it would be even with Almada and Yakumakis, but without them, I just I think Toronto defense, um, which who have been surprisingly good, um, could be could be good options um, either you know for a bench play rolling into a late one. Um, I'm not sure who I like in the late games. I I'm a fan of Houston's defense too. They're away. They're away, so that's not always the best either. Um, but they got the clean sheet last week, um, and they're solid. LAFC could could do it. Um, I I don't know. Um, so I mean, there's a bunch of cheap ones later. You have I think we were just now talking about Pantamis from from Portland. You could go with a late keeper or um, I even wrote down um, who's who's the backup um, union keeper. He's super cheap. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, again, uh, away, but I just I don't like any the, the, home, the home matchups aren't any better than the away matchups in my mind to this week. And so, just go cheap. Just take some punts on on some. Yeah. Uh, again, the Toronto game is a is a fairly cheap home guy, uh, home keeper. And then build something around it, and just just guess. I don't know. That's, that's the best I got. I threw out some of the teams that I like for defenders too. Again, I'm I'm just taking cheap defenders sure. as well. I'm not really. I mean, aside from Lennon last week, I'm not really. I don't I don't love a lot of the, even the attacking defenders are are expensive. Bressel's too expensive. Alba's too expensive mm. for me. I'm just. I'm just cheap <laughs> with, with the defenders lately, and, yeah. and I just don't. Th- I don't think I don't think the ROI is there for the points. Honestly, yeah, you're, not, you're not getting interceptions. You're not getting clear. Well, uh, you might be getting. Are you getting clearances still? You're not getting interceptions. You're not getting blocks. I can't remember what it is, but you got. You get the idea. You're not getting as many of the categories as you used to. So you're not getting the the floor that you would. Where you're you're clean sheet hunting with cheap guys. So. Toronto, Columbus, Cincinnati. I do like Cincinnati. The, a lot of the guys are, are a little more expensive. But if Keller starts, he might be a nice one. Yeah. Um, some of the Cincinnati players. I'd love to have Celentano, but I just don't think – I don't think I'm going to pay seven for a keeper. Um, so that's kind of where I am. I know that's super, super vague as far as player picks, but don't spend that much time on your defense, y'all. Build your attack. Build your forwards and – fill in that defense with just some, some cheap stacks or something like that. Ashley. Yeah, I like everything that Matt said and I have one small exception, which is and it, I, I'm going to preface this by saying that it didn't pan out. Yeah. But with Messi out, Russell was playing as a striker, like as a winger, striker, front three player. And again, there wasn't point production from it this week. But if he's there again, that is a player that I will tinker into my lineup because I think I'm paying a defender price for a midfielder. I mean, I'm kind of paying a midfielder price for a defender, if if that makes sense. But that's definitely someone I'm considering. Um, I really, I really enjoyed your breakdown, Matt. I'm gonna throw some some numbers at some of these games too. Um, the you know the backup Miami keeper is five. The backup Revolution keeper is five. Those are two early kickoff games if you're going for a keeper and the reason i'm kind of pushing that is if you're still trying to price rise having two keepers play will help you do that if unless your bench points hit like crazy if that makes sense right 
Um, so I think this is a week where you could definitely get two starting keepers in your team for a price rise. Um, but obviously take the points if the, if the bench keeper hits. But uh, the Columbus backup keeper at Charlotte, that's a five, five million keeper. Um, Orlando backup keeper at home against Austin. Not a great looking Austin team so far this year. That's a 5.0 keeper. I have um, Gavron, the Toronto keeper, in my team right now. I agree with you about Atlanta. Atlanta can definitely surprise us. Atlanta's a team I don't often count out, even with the players that they're missing. But Toronto has been sneaky decent at defense this year, which is not something I've said in a really long time. Um, also, Berkey staying home for St. Louis, not quite in the same form he was at the end of last season, but they're playing at home against D.C. He's expensive, but I think that's a decent shout. And then, like we said, both Portland and Philadelphia in that late game will have backup keepers, both of whom are 4.9, which is incredibly cheap. Philly's missing a lot of players. Portland is obviously missing their keeper, so I think that that's the biggest loss and, I, and a defender, but for the rest of it, Portland should be a pretty relatively, at least compared to these past couple weeks, full-strength team. So that's something to consider as well. Just as a as a note, because I've seen the name floated around because he did stop a PK this week, what I've seen is that Andrew Thomas will not start for Seattle again, that Stefan Fry should be back this week. I don't like that matchup from a Seattle defensive perspective anyways, but do what you want to do. Um, that's where I'm at with keepers. I, I have Gavron, and then I'm just kind of waiting to decide where I want to go either before or after him. Uh, if that makes sense, and but I, am, I agree, I'm going cheap. I'm, I'm going to spend my money other places. I like DeAndre Yedlin. I don't know that he's fully fit into this system yet, but I like him. Uh, but I'm considering Keller as a cheaper option if he starts, which I think he will re give me a head nod to confirm because Robinson's gone. I think he's the one who fits in there most likely, but we'll see. I'm very happy to not have any midweek games for FC Cincinnati this week so they can get a full week's rest so I can get a full week's worth of player. Double-edged sword, Ashley. Double-edged sword. <laughs> okay. I uh, I like San Jose defense this week, and I know I get a lot of crap um, when I go against my home team, but we are not a MLS podcast. We are a fantasy MLS podcast, and the fantasy points come first. I don't get any points for picking Sanders players because I am a diehard Sanders fan, and so... San Jose defense hasn't wowed me, but I'm still definitely considering them this week. I'm going back and forth. I've seen Rodriguez mentioned a few times, but currently the best scoring player from the last round, so they're on a price rise, uh, is Costa, who is a 5.2 defender that is so not worth mentioning that he doesn't have a face in my, in my game. Um, but like I said before, that's something that I'm considering when I'm picking a player, right? Rodriguez is on a week down. But Costa is on a rise up from this past week. So that might be a decision maker for me. I also like LAFC in the sense that there's a couple of cheaper options there. But are they cheap because they're bad? Question mark? Uh, I think that that is a, is a decent matchup. It's something I would have picked last year without really hesitating. But if Nashville have Mukhtar and or Surge back, do I like the matchup as much? So I'm just kind of going to wait and see. But... I also, I do like Toronto's defense. Shane O'Neill's been where I've been going lately. I think I might like Portland's defense. They have some cheap people that should start. And then one I'm going to throw out there is that Kyle Smith for Orlando got two points last week. He's a 4.0 defender. So that's something. Whenever I say a 4.0 defender, my ears perk up. So that's something that I'm definitely <laughs> paying attention to. As they should. And just, and just so you know, Ashley, Kyle Smith played uh, defensive midfield for Orlando this past week because they were missing they were missing their defensive midfielders so he was actually playing the, the six will they be missing this week <laughs> that I don't know okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure somebody I'm sure somebody would, will let us know though for sure Reed what about you so as uh, for me first I will clarify uh, we talked about some of the points it is only clearances that are generating points for defenders right now uh, of course they're getting passes and things like that but uh, blocks were taken out of the game due to a what I believe is a data mapping error. We decided again, episode two. Go go check it out. 
Um, no, don't. If you just want to check, don't. Just listen to us now. Uh, so you guys have covered a lot of who I was looking at. Uh, looking at a cheap keeper room myself. Uh, Gavron is who I have in right now. I think that's just... He's he's playing a relatively early game. That 730 game is a sweet spot because it still gives you plenty of time to react for the 1030 games. Um, and so we've got LA Portland, San Jose Earthquakes, and I think you've got a couple of good options there. I think if you have if you're flush with Cass, Loris could be an option. Not a hundred percent necessarily on Nashville scoring chops right now, so uh, potentially could go uh, with with him. Uh, though LA is missing some defense, uh, but may also I've got Daniel penciled in right now he's he's at least a veteran keeper at this point um ashley how do you feel about seattle's chances for scoring or is that um, going to be they've team- only scored penalties <laughs> exactly so how do you so. feel about san jose's ability to draw a penalty i guess is the better question I'm, i mean I'm, I, I don't I'm want them to give up a penalty it, let's just put it that way i will say i think i did say this to you um, Spencer was having problems with his app on his phone, and so I had him set a team on my phone, and I threw Rui Diaz on his bench this week because he was 6.6, and I was like, oh, no, why not? He needs Spencer needs the money, and he scored a PK, so I felt really good about that. That's right. Didn't yeah. benefit from it, but I felt good. Uh, I am not putting money on the Seattle Sounders to score a freaking goal. They might so. get some people back. I think that's an, another lineup to pay attention to. If you see Rusnak come back or draw Powell come back, um, I think it could be a factor, but I think picking up San Jose defense is a great call. Right. So that's why right now I've got to keep a roost set up with uh, Gavin and Daniel. It's just it's just an easy switch. Yeah. I mean, you can maybe – I know some people have, have thrown out Celentano as a game, but I think my, my issue with Celentano is that there's more value in the field players necessarily than, right. than Celentano right there uh, and more expensive than, than these two players there. But at this point, uh, for, for two sub-6 million keepers – I think you can. Many people can definitely afford that. But again, we do have some some peak keepers who are starting some of the 4.0 range, who you could at least just throw on your bench, and they're not going to lose you points, and maybe you'll get some kind of value gain off of that. Over with defenders, um, yeah, same kind of mind right there for for me. Um, a Cincinnati player. I'm assuming it might be Keller, like you said, Ashley. He did play the majority of last week's game. Um, he did not, of course, play during uh, CCL, but um, he did play the majority of last week's game. I would expect him to still be in that starting lineup with Robinson gone. Uh, but of course, for a little bit more, if you want something more offensive-minded, there is Yedlin. Um, I think those are probably the two go-to cheaper picks for Cincinnati. Yedlin being the more expensive of the two, if you want to get mm-hmm. into that defense right there um i also like toronto got an option there on my bench uh i think um let's see here did you guys cover that one uh with uh some rotations there at uh lafc um palencia i believe should be coming back in to start 5.0 defender again international duty pardon Yes, because Campos, is, as I mentioned earlier, Campos is on international duty, and I'm not 100% on Nashville scoring chops. So uh, I think that's a good, some good value right there. And um, Raposo over at Vancouver, I believe last week lined up as a forward and give me a shot at an OOP forward, who, a defender who's playing at forward right there. Uh, I will throw that on my bench against RSL uh, and and see what happens. Vancouver, of course, plays that 7:30 game. So again, if you have some players from LAFC that you um, want to put in your field and have a player like uh, Raposo on your bench, that's what I have. I can see his score and I can know what I want to do if I want to force some auto ruse or switch a ruse or not right there. So I think you guys have covered a lot of the players there. It's it's gonna be a strange one with. With defenses not being at their 100%, with keepers being gone, with with attackers being missing, uh, it's going to be a wild time for Because MLS. And so I think we'll have more clean sheets than we did last round, but I don't think this is going to be a huge defensive clean sheet landslide uh, because of that, because I think it's going to be felt on that defensive side more. Uh, going up to chat... Anelli for a price rise option being mentioned there. Uh, Raposo also being mentioned as taking some corner kicks. There we go. So, yeah, set pieces. How much is he? 6.6. Raposo? Yep. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, But, yeah, O'Neal. Last week as well. 
same thing. So yeah, so definitely some options there. I, I like matching up keepers. I mean, you can look at like Rodriguez, I guess, with uh, uh, San Jose if you're looking at, at going for players there as well. Uh, so definitely some definitely some options that you have at defense. Let's move over to midfielders now, uh, starting with you, Ashley. Though I will take a moment first. I mentioned JFR uh, in the previous segment when I was talking about injuries. That's and I was I was. Uh, chastised in chat for using jargon it just it just comes out sometimes i'm sorry it's it's johnny russell over with uh, sporting kansas city it's it's johnny Edward? russell no 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 just it's just johnny russell okay it's just it's just johnny russell so yeah he's not in my team because he's hurt, but it's, but it i apologize yes he is a midfielder which is why i mentioned it now and i apologize for falling into a, a brief moment of jargon there uh, uh, so take uh, it away ashley uh, I'm going super chalky. I, you'd think after this last week, maybe I'd spend some money on some defenders, make sure all my strikers were hot. Not spend all my money in my midfield, but guess what I'm doing? Spending all my money in my midfield. So I have heel this week, although for some reason he's the one that I'm the most hesitant about. Uh, I just do not like how New England looks. I don't like how New England looks. I don't like how he looks. But I'm doing, I'm doing it. I have Lucho. Uh, Lucho is a must for me this week was the first person on my team uh, I would hear either Pooj or Payne still I have leaned Pooj lately uh, that bit me this week but I still did it I have a Vander honestly just based on that bump play production that he had this past week and all of the rotation from Philly Philly missing so many people now Philly's kids are better than most teams' kids. I think that that's something that's important to note. That Philadelphia Academy, the kids that they bring up, the kids that come off their bench, they're good. They go play other places. They do well here. I I still think that that rotation should be something Portland can take advantage of, but they're a team I always hesitate to bank on. But still, Evander made it into my lineup, and then... I'm really doing the double dirty and going Espinoza, who hasn't fully popped yet this season, but I just think that the current state of the Seattle Sounders and a home match is something that is worth betting against, as hard as that is for me. Now, that would be my first tinker out, because I turn into a little bit of a homer when I'm trying to save money, but if I'm trying to adjust something at some point, I think... Espinosa would be my first midfielder out to someone a little less expensive. There are some really good, like seven million, eight million dollar midfielders that are playing this week, but currently that is where I'm at. Matt, yeah, I've got a, I've got several of those as well, Ashley. Um, I mean, I, like you said, Lucho, got to be the first one that you put on the list. That's you know the home matchup. He, again, he is just built. For these categories and if you watch the game at all when he came in i mean he was just he was incredible um i, I also have heel um but i will say um watching new england play um and i don't know if if this is a trend um God, we're going into what week five it's still hard to tell what exactly what's what's a trend and what's not but um new england New England just wasn't amazing, um, and I wonder if that's gonna if that's gonna cause possession problems, even at home for them, because um, Cincinnati just they were playing them off the pitch, especially once once Lucho came in. Um, and if you look at Heel's points, he's done better in away games where maybe he's hitting people on the counter or something like that. I I just I don't know if that's gonna be how New England is set up now. Um, I don't know if you y'all remember. I don't think it was last year, but maybe the year before when Atlanta was was just playing poorly, and Almada was having a lot of trouble scoring, and he was kind of doing the same thing. He was having to come deep, which is what he did. You know, um, which is why he he scored poorly in this past game this past weekend. He was having to drop too deep to get the ball. Um, Orlando was kind of depriving him of the ball, so he couldn't do as much which is basically what was happening to, to heel versus Cincinnati is he just wasn't getting the ball in a far enough attacking position to be able to really get those key passes and, and, and help create like he normally does. And so I, I'm, I'm partly wondering if that's 
just the, because New England just doesn't have that many great midfielders or defenders. You know, they've got a couple of good attackers, but other than that, I don't know how much possession they're going to keep in these games. Um, so anyway, all that to say, I will be taking him, but I, that is something to watch moving forward with him. Um, Evander, um, I'll give him a shot. Like you can't argue if somebody's putting up um, those those um, shot creating activities, which are kind of one of the the metrics that I look at a lot. Um, is you know what what are they doing to create shots? Yeah. Um, because I think that's where a lot of the key passes are coming from. Um, those type of activities, and so I mean Evander just has been blowing it out of the water the last couple of of, uh, of weeks, and so I think it's a I think it's a decent matchup. I do um, want to want to throw out that Philly is got a lot of its defenders still there. Um, I believe Elliot and Glassness are still there, if I'm not mistaken. Wagner. Um, so they've got most of their defenders still. Martinez being gone will obviously make a difference. Not having Blake will make a difference. Not having guys dog in the attack will make a difference. But they still have Ura and Carranza. I think if Carranza's healthy, I think he played. Um, so anyway not going to be a, a super easy matchup, but I, I, I'm just going to go with the production of the last couple of games that Evander's had. Um, Gold is going to be my fourth one. Probably. Um, I, I, I'm, he may get overlooked a little bit because he hasn't really done that much, but I just, man, I really like that matchup. Um, I don't, I think RSL is going to struggle a little bit. And Vancouver's just too good not to, not to do well. Eventually, eventually they're going to turn a corner. And so I'm kind of kind of hoping that it, that it's going to be this week. And I think Gauls is built for these new categories that we or these new scoring categories that we have. I mean, he he likes to shoot. He's always playmaking and stuff like that. And so I think um, um, I think that's where I'm going to go with the fourth one. And then my fifth mid, I would love to have like a Pooj Paintsville type, um, and I may I may eventually. But to get who I want in my lineup, Ashley, I'm doing a. Of, uh, like a little bit of a cheaper mid for that spot. So that'll be the first one to either get to get um, scrubbed or to, um, you know, maybe upgrade depending on what's happening with my bench in the earlier game. Um, so right now I have um, – I've thrown a couple of names around. Um, there were some that were in, in, in Discord earlier. Um, Ojeda from uh, Orlando is one that got mentioned 25 key passes in four games and they weren't even four full games for him. And so um, if he can start shooting a little bit, um, Torres is out. So he's likely going to be taking some, uh, I know Ladero's still there, but he's still going to be taking some, some free kicks and be involved. Um, and they're due, right? I mean, they gotta be home to home to, uh, to uh, yeah. Austin. Can is... I throw two cheap midfielders out that I've forgotten yeah, about please, that are their road, do. but while we're kind of shitting on New England, Kellen Acosta's on a price rise at 6-7, and Herbers, who has been a lot of people's bench price rise, is still only 7 mil and has risen 500,000 every week. So he's on a very consistent price rise. And again, it's a road team, but they're going to New England, and so if you're looking for cheap midfielders, those are two names. I don't know that Kellen Acosta's going to start the whole, play the whole game, but those are some great value midfielders. Yeah, that's definitely, and they're in that that seven range. And yeah. um, Mor Morgan's another one with Forsberg out. Maybe he gets maybe and Tolkien, right? So yeah, that's maybe maybe more set pieces for him. Mm -hmm. um, he's closer to eight, I think. And then um, and then uh, Tommy from uh, SKC, I think, maybe has a chance. Um, he hasn't done a whole lot, but surely he's due, right? So I don't know. He's kind of a little bit lower on my list, but he's around that eight mark that where if yeah. you want to go with a little bit of a cheaper midfielder and, and he's got pedigree in the league. Well, it's um, a home so. game for SKC too. I mean, they're playing the Galaxy, but still a home game for SK, SKC I think is always a viable shout. And Galaxy's given up goals too. They're not oh. just scoring them, they're giving them up. And so yeah, and they're, one of their starting defenders got a red card. Casares got a red card too, so mm -hmm. I don't know if it fills in for him. but Yeah, so um, those... Um, those are kind of what my thoughts are as far as uh, mid. I like it. No. A little bit of gambler's fallacy right there, though. Uh, no, same page for me. Uh, heel, 
Lucho, Paints Hill, definitely in my lineup. Uh, keeping an eye on Heal, of course, uh, with that. Others after them, I'm, I'm looking at Evander. He's in my lineup right now because of those bonus points production, and I have him in line to be my my Barrios now going forward. But um, I, I liked those last couple of games. I wish there was some more data to look at. But I'm willing to roll that dice uh, going into this round with that matchup. Um, got Ojeda there on my bench just because looking at, at Orlando – uh gold is definitely in the running for my my number five spot for a midfielder he's not had a lot of great production and vancouver had what three goals last week and he wasn't involved in any of them which not what i want to see uh but i know his pedigree's there so I'll, i'm going to think more on that one throughout the week read more of what other people are saying um but he's he's definitely there on my list of someone i'm going to keep an eye on uh lewis morgan um, probably definitely lower uh, sixth or seventh maybe on my list of what I'm thinking about just uh, had, had some good production um, going to be more of the target this week with some international absences but a lot of missing pieces for, for New York so I do worry about that and of course Espinoza on the list as well um, Last he's been doing some good bonus point production shot numbers have been up this last game um, relatively I mean, a, a pretty much full strength San Jose right there going into um the games this week against seattle so uh and he may be getting some of that form that we saw last year so i, I like espinosa if if i if i don't go with heel after seeing seeing what it looks like in the first game because let's talk about heel for a second yeah. I, I agree with everything that you're talking about but this isn't this is a pick against chicago it is it's what true. it is i mean they've They've not they've done okay sometimes with defense, but not been great with defense. Missing key player there with with Shakiri, and so uh, I know both teams are going to be missing some players. But this is mostly a pick against Chicago when we're looking and at heel. He'll had an off week this week, sure. but in the previous three weeks, he had a goal in two of those three games, and then he racked up five bonus points without a goal in the week. He didn't score. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I'm not trying to quickly fade him, but mm -hmm. this last round was so poor that it gave me pause. But I feel like that's what he, he's done the last, I'd say, two full seasons. Is like, he'll he'll drop a three, maybe a four, and then we're all like, oh, is he losing it? And then he doesn't, you know? So I see that Herbers was mentioned in the chat, and uh, it was also mentioned in chat, and so I'm going to mention him again. Um, yeah, do it. He... When I, when I mentioned him last week, it was with a time of caution about that 11 falling off. And so a potential price fall. And that did not happen. He okay. he had he had a 0.5 increase. Uh, a lot of that based on the value that he is right now at a 7. Yeah. And, and that... Half a mil every week of the season. And so he's, yeah, he's gone up 2 million total. Um but this may be more of the expectation of what we're going to get from him, that five-ish to or three to seven kind of points right there, depending on what, what he's playing for, four to maybe seven if he gets a goal. So maybe four to five is more of a reasonable floor of what you might expect from from him. And even for seven million, is that what you want to pay? Is this four points what you're going for? So um, I definitely think he's a good value. He could be potential bench plays in the right situations. I don't know if on the road to New England is that situation. Um, but uh, so that did seem in chat. And you did mention him, Ashley. I will mention that and own up to that. If that's that's why I shied away from him. And he did increase $5 yeah. million even with that 11 falling off. So. And he produced, right? Didn't he get like a seven or something? He got I mean, five. He, he, he got five. He, he had a good amount of shots. <laughs> he had good key passes, which um, – key passes he's been kind of flirting with decent numbers okay and he had some passes so he he has some respectable bonus points right there so four points right there he did get a yellow card so minus one there so he would have had six he would have had six points uh, but he got a yellow but again everybody got a yellow last week so he's just he just played that's all it was uh but yeah very similar boat of, of who we're looking at right there uh let's move on to forward so you're looking at matt so I mean, I gotta, I gotta throw out Luis Suarez as the first name. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's obviously still got something left in the tank. 
<laughs> I know we were all kind of wondering when he came into the league and you hear about his knees and everything. And, and I mean, clearly he's, he's, he can do it without Messi in the lineup. So even if Messi doesn't play, um, I guess the question is whether he's going to start. I personally think he's going to start with a, with a week off in between. Like, I, I just think he'll start. I, I agree. Um, um, I think it's a great early game. I'm, I'll probably play him from the bench just because he's an early game. Um, and and give him a shot. He's expensive. I mean, the, I, I this is again another week that I wish we could take you know like five forwards or six forwards instead, right. just because I really like a lot of the matchups. I think some of the guys are, um, you know have have a really good opportunity to put in some some goals. And so, but I think, I mean, I think I know it's away, but no Coronel, no Tolkien. I'm not sure what other, if any of their central defenders are out, um, but I mean, Red Bull's missing several guys, and so just after seeing what they did away last last week, um, I don't know. It's kind of like, do we leave him out at our own risk? Um, so he's right now he's on my bench, um, so I will say that. Um, and then obviously Cucho. I mean, we we covered that a little bit earlier, but he's. I mean, he. There's not really a whole lot of um, matchups in which I wouldn't take him at this point. He's a he shoots he shoots the ball. He's the playmaker. Like he's basically Zella and himself rolled into one. Basically, like he's doing the playmaking, but he's also scoring the goals. And so it's I don't know. He's he's this this cool hybrid player, and and it's just great for fantasy is what it is. And so. Um, he's consistent so far. And so, um, I think, I think you got to have him in the lineup and I'll, I'll be starting him. Yeah. Um, and then my, my last spot is probably going to be, um, um, you know, I've gone back and forth and it, it depends on who I'm going to be able to scrub. And if I'm going to be able to upgrade, but, um, I'll probably choose somebody between the Brian white, Alan Polito type range, um, around the, that eight mark. Um, I really like both of their matchups as far as who they're playing against. Um, Bowanga, if I can fit him in, maybe as as that spot, just depending on who who I'm end up able to scrub. Um, I might scrub a mid and then just use that money and upgrade White to Bowanga um, for the late game because I think he's due. Honestly, um, surely they're not going to be that bad, <laughs> you know. We'll see. We'll see in a few weeks if if I'm right or not. But you know, like it, I just think they're too good. I think Belonga's too good a player. I think he's got a good floor. Um, and so, those are the type of players that I'm looking at for that third spot. Um, I also wanted to throw out a couple. Um, I think the, the the Italians from Toronto might be good shots, good punts um, against Atlanta, uh, especially in Signe. Um, and then Jao Klaus, I'll throw that out there against DC, um, had some had some decent bonus points this past week. And so, while I'm not all in on St. Louis because Lu, uh, Lewin is out, um, you know it's a it's a he's a cheaper option. He's like seven, and so if you're looking for for some budget, um, that's a good way to do it. Ashley, and don't be, and don't be afraid to captain. <laughs> that's the next section don't be afraid uh i'm not i uh <laughs> i also have cucho i the way that i describe him when i've been talking about him in my household is he's like a 10 9 like mm-hmm. he'll play as almost like a 10 and a 9 and i just love watching him he's so fun uh and it's very productive for how these points are working in our league now for sure and like i said he's producing uh he was first on my team and then honestly the next striker on my team was jovalich from la galaxy i have i think like has it been two years or is it at least last season i would say often on this podcast why isn't he starting he would come in in so many games last year and score or assist. Why is he not starting? Well, this year he's starting and he's scoring and he's currently in form. It's a road game, but it's Sporting Kansas City, which is not a team that I bet highly against defensively, even at home. Or sorry, bet highly on 
defensively, even at home. And he's already scored two road goals this season, says Tyler, who is never wrong about stats. So <laughs> I think that, I, like, I hear you, Matt, with the, you know, like, Brian White could be due. Bowanga hasn't scored. Um, I'm going back and forth between Bowanga and Suarez, to be, to be fair. But Jovlich, to me, is in, is in form. So I'd like to ride that hot hand one more week against a medium defensive team uh just to see he is expensive right like if you're trying to save money on a striker he is also you know in the nine million range and so that's not exactly cheap but i think that he's definitely someone worth paying attention to and then i absolutely agree about luis suarez sorry you have is 10 i was the first person to say i want to see how he does and i think it uh, the first two rounds i was like not making that much of an impact not really doing much. Not like how Messi doesn't move around, but like Suarez, he just wasn't really doing much. He has turned it on. I almost feel like he's punking everyone, not just in MLS, but in the world, <laughs> with all of his talk about his knees and all the shots. And he has two, you know, three games really, because it was the first round, which was two games, and then the next game, just kind of like n- n- nothing. And then now he's just clicked and it is working and he gets it. <laughs> and so. I, I agree that that is something that it's to me, it's a little unfortunate that that game so early because I'd like to see that. I'd like to see other lineups before I decide if I want Suarez, if that makes sense. Uh, but for me, it, I'm going back and forth between Bawanga and, and he, and they're com- two completely different ends of the timeline. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure where I'll land. I like them both. I will never bet against Dini Bawanga. Not now, not never. I think that at home against Nashville is a great shot for him. Uh, it's just a, a later a later game, if that makes sense. And so I'm, I don't know if I'll end up getting there before I throw another striker on my on my team. So uh, it also feels weird to bench a striker, but that's what I where I'm at. I'm, I, I can't play all three. It just doesn't feel right. So th- those are who I'm looking at. I think there's a lot of other good options, but those four names are are where I'm at right now. Again, if we're looking at history, the dream team has been comprised of four four twos. It's not been um, had a three striker week in any of the dream teams. So, just saying. Now, you guys have uh, named off almost everybody. I, I would say I mean drove like hard to to pass up with with that consistency right there. The only one that I would add. Uh, to that is probably Bupenza from who you've talked about. Um, minutes managed the last couple of rounds because of the the Champions Cup games. I'd like to see what he looks like coming back, getting getting more time than he has before with uh, with Lucho right there. But yeah, uh, Buanga Suarez, Bupenza, Cucho, the only one for sure in my lineup right now. Also, I guess we... I, there's some questions again. We've talked a lot about new england today and some of the the general questions that we have about them um but they've they've got a forward who's been getting some key passes been getting some shots uh thomas uh Chankale. he's not been getting goals and that's the bad thing about him but he's going up against against a chicago and so i mean he's been getting he got 13 key passes against Atlanta, eight against Cincinnati, seven. He's had had at least five shots in each of the games that he's had so far. So um, definitely a risk, but a name that I wanted to throw out there since it could be someone that's on your bench and you take a flyer and just see what happens against Chicago. And and in his favor as well, he's he's hit the crossbar twice twice well, in two straight games. So like he's. He's getting he's getting in good positions and he's super active. So I I agree, Reed. That's a that's a nice um, another. I think I believe he's below eight. So that's still a nice um, punt, especially for a, like a bench early game. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a nice job. Nice Can one. I throw out from chat here that Tyler's saying that both Lupenza and Bawanga are not for sure not leaving on international oh. duty because. Gabon hasn't released a roster yet, or we don't see one yet, at least, and they both play for them. So, just put a pin in both those names, just in case. Just in case. Bo watch, Bo watch, twenty twenty four. 
We'll see what happens. No, no, at, no. Great, great tip. Thank you, Tyler, for sharing that, and thank you for mentioning it, Ashley. Um, Astrid next to that one, depending on what. I mean, there's there's a lot of the week led, everyone. With this podcast is going to go up either tonight or Tuesday ish. So uh, there's a lot of the week left to see what happens with with internationals. Please do check back to the mega reference to see what is there, because as that gets confirmed, we will be sure to keep that updated. Let's wrap everything else up with our four or sorry, with our uh, captain picks, Ashley. Lucho. Matt. Lucho. And I agree, the the hat trick for captains, uh, Lucho right there. Just been, I mean, you all can correct, add anything else, just been so consistent, seemingly regardless of the minutes that he has uh, in in three of his four games, he has scored at least eight points with uh, the four-point game against DC being kind of a head-scratcher with that one, but... Uh, but just so consistent with with what he's going out there. And as you mentioned, Matt, the point system seems to be working for him. Um, But yeah, easy, easy captain for me in this round. And I have no faith in NYCFC. So (laughs) they've just been, they've just not looked great. I think, I mean, actually, you know, we talked about that a little bit earlier, but but I think it's coaching, honestly. I think the talent's there. I think, I think it's coaching. But all that to say, they haven't really found themselves or they are trying to. And, uh, I don't know if an away game at one of the one of the best teams in the league is where that's going to happen. Uh, number two yeah. for me is Cucho. I mean, that's that's kind of where it is right now. If if I decide not to do Acosta, I mean, I think Cucho is is a great fallback captain or primary captain if you want to go with that way. I completely understand if that's what you want to to go with, but he does play at seven thirty, so you're going to have to pick between the two of them uh, at at that time at some point. But who do you who would you guys have as your number two captain pick? Cucho. Okay. Are we hat trick it? All right. Double hat trick. It happens here, <laughs> but not in real life. Not in real life. Not back to back. Never. Not back to back, but here. Absolutely for sure. Uh, looking over at chat. Yeah. Chats. Uh, Lucho, Cucho, Evander. Uh, Scott, interesting. Oh. Evander's a captain. Uh, differential for sure. So that would be. I could, I could see somebody throwing in a Suarez. I think that would be interesting. Yeah. That would definitely Agreed. be. Yeah, it's, that's what Tate just said. Suarez question mark. So uh, we'll see. ACC. I, I like that for always Captain Cucho. Always or just always is that always Captain Cho? Ucho Cucho. Always Captain and Ucho. And Ucho always Captain Ucho. So that can that can work. So we'll go with that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight for this episode. It's been fun uh, to be able to catch up after this this wild week uh with hope it's going to be a little bit more as we uh would hope for or less better scores in in the coming round so let's wrap everything else up with our plugs matt yeah at soccer down here um everything southern atlanta based um soccer they do uh they do frequent um like podcasts and twitch streams and stuff like that um also want to shout out jason wright from the right agency um we've been doing some uh player picks each week um and so just want to shout him out um and the community love it having fun ashley yeah i just want to give a shout out the to the community and not just the people but also the resources that the people provide uh especially on a week like this i think it's super important to make sure you know, you're checking in on Discord, you're looking at the rosters, and you're interacting with everyone to make sure that you know exactly what's going on because this is going to be a weird week. And that's for myself. All the usual MLS Fantasy Boss Network uh, plugs, MLSFantasyBoss.com with our articles, uh, with, of course, this podcast, uh, the differentials up there, the Discord player poll, uh, and uh, the MLS Fantasy Boss Discord in general, the best fantasy community on the internet for you to go and hang out and just chat, talking about fantasy, talk about general MLS stuff. Uh, and it's just a, a great community to have. You can find out how to join at MLSFantasyBoss.com slash Discord. And with Baby Roo feeling better, I hope to be back to the regular posting schedule this week. So appreciate the, the kind words during last week with Baby Roo. Um, and happy to still get some, some uh, content out. That's helpful for everyone as we go forward. So uh, we will see what happens with this next week. So as always, good luck. I'm glad he's doing better.